Some people express concern about the Pentecostalizing of the Catholic Church or that the charisms and the charismatic renewal somehow infiltrated the church from Protestant Christianity. But in fact, the church has been Pentecostal from day one. The church was born in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And from that day, charisms of innumerable kinds have been poured out by the Holy Spirit on the faithful. And we see them throughout the history of the church in the lives of the saints. Many of the saints have used the gift of tongues, for example. Many of the saints have prophesied, many healed and did miracles, all of course by the power of the Holy Spirit in Christ. It wasn't their power, it was Jesus' power. It's really only in the modern era that many Catholics have come to think that these gifts are rare or uh, almost never to be seen in the life of the church. In fact, it's because we live in an age of skepticism. We live in an age still influenced by the Enlightenment, which didn't believe in a transcendent God who actually speaks and acts. The church is still influenced by that in some ways. We've come to think of extraordinary gifts of the Spirit as something that we rarely or, or never see. But in fact, they are part of our apostolic heritage. They are part of the full equipment given by the Holy Spirit for every Christian to carry out their mission from the Lord. I know when I was coming into the Catholic Church and discovered the charismatic renewal, at first it seemed like it was carrying things over from Protestant churches, Pentecostal churches, and I was so delighted to discover the fuller story of the charismatic renewal going back to the late 19th century. A sister, now a blessed Elena Guerra, wrote to Pope Leo XIII several times and he then indicated a number of things that the Holy Spirit was placing on her heart for him to do. She was instructing the Pope, makes me think of St. Catherine of Siena, and she instructed him to write an encyclical on the Holy Spirit, which he did, and to establish a novena to the Holy Spirit between the Ascension and Pentecost, which he did, and then to renew that novena among his brother bishops and ask all of them to pray it and spread that devotion throughout the world, which he did, and then to consecrate the whole 20th century to the Holy Spirit by singing the Veni Creatris Spiritus on the first day of the year, January 1st in St. Peter's Basilica, which he did. And then this unique expression of the charismatic gifts emerged halfway across the world in Topeka, Kansas, who seemed to be receiving this overflow of grace from the prayer of our Pope. And that spread also to Azusa Street and to different places and it began to gather some steam. And then in the middle of the 20th century, St. John the 23rd, whom Pope Francis canonized and declared the Pope of the Holy Spirit, beatified Blessed Elena Guerra and also opened up the windows of the church in the Second Vatican Council to allow the Holy Spirit to flow more fully through the church. And then just after the council, there is this reception of these charismatic gifts in the Catholic Church among Catholics, the Duquesne Retreat, which took place at the Ark and the Dove in Pittsburgh, not far from my monastery. And these Catholics were reflecting on the sacraments. And so the Holy Spirit comes into the church through the prayer of the Pope and reflecting on the sacrament of confirmation. And as these young people were drawn to pray in front of the Blessed Sacrament, and then experience the charismatic gifts as they had already begun to flow also in the Protestant churches. But that fuller narrative, I think, helps us to see how the Holy Spirit really works through the, the great gifts, the charism of the papacy, and certainly the, the gift of the, the sacraments themselves in order to then animate and flow into the lives of the faithful for the sake of this new evangelization. If Protestants have helped Catholics to rediscover the gifts, we should thank them for helping us reclaim what belongs to our own apostolic heritage.